So if you've seen more than one of my videos, you know I like to paint outside using pencils. But I also like to paint inside using the reference photos I took too. Like this mountain goat. In this video, I'm gonna show you my top tip for taking reference photos and show you how I painted this with watercolor pencils. Let's get started. And now I'm back at home and I'm looking at this video on my computer. I'll admit that getting this shot was sort of lucky, but I put luck in my favor by taking video instead of waiting for that perfect moment and risking missing it. And that's my top tip for getting a good reference photos. Don't be afraid of using the video function on your camera instead of relying only on still shots. It often allows you to pause on the perfect moment with your subject. This works for your phone cameras too. I mean, it doesn't always work, but then again, neither do photos. I have a higher success rate with video than single shots, especially with wildlife or even pets and children. So try it out. After I printed this reference out, I decided the easiest way to get the drawing onto my canvas was to cut it out and trace it. This obviously only works if the canvas and the paper are compatible in size. And I had to fiddle with cropping the photo to the right size. Otherwise, you may have to use other techniques like gridding or freehand drawing it. I'm not great at freehand drawing animals, so I decided to trace this one. I was once told that tracing was cheating, but it's not. There's so much more to art that has to happen after the outline is done. But let's get back to painting. I'll be using Karin Dosh Museum Ochre Whale watercolor pencils for this, but for the initial drawing, I'm actually using a non-water soluble pencil so that I don't lose track of the lines and key reference points like the eyes and ears and nose when I wet the canvas. And that's the other part of tip number two. Consider doing the initial drawing with non-water soluble pencils so you don't wash it away later. In fact, I kept going with the non-water soluble pencil for some of the background trees just to make sure I didn't lose the overall composition. Since the coat is white, I wanted to make sure I had really good guidelines as to where not to paint. It's really easy to lose edges of things with watercolor pencils once you wet them, so taking the extra time to do this under drying is important, especially with this goat because I need to leave it white, or mostly white. A little bit more on the first tip in taking reference photos. Take close-ups as well as wide-angle or zoomed-out photos for background references. I really like the way the trees looked here. Even though it has a blurry goat, the trees were good. I totally forgot to turn on the camera for the part where I put my first layer of water-soluble pencils down and started wetting it. But you can see here that the darker underdrying stays put even after I put light green on top. By the end of this painting, you won't even be able to see any of the underlying marks because the watercolor pencil will completely cover those marks. But they're still super valuable to have because they guide me all the way to the end. I'm being very careful around the goat because I really want to preserve the canvas for that beautiful coat of white fur. This canvas is a watercolor canvas bore. It works really well with these pencils. It's a lot stiffer and more durable than regular watercolor paper. And since it's also a bit less absorbent than paper would be, it's easier to spread that pigment around and to fix mistakes, which you'll see me make now and then. The most common technique for these pencils is to draw on a dry surface and then wet them after. My only tip here is to not worry too much about details at this stage. In fact, I put down the color pretty quickly using the side of the pencil, rather than try to draw too many details at this stage. That's tip number three. There will be plenty of time for details later. This entire painting took several hours, but I didn't do it all in one sitting. I worked on it a little at a time over the course of several weeks. That's the nice thing about this medium. It's easy to start and stop, and there's no cleanup between those sessions. I just left it at my art desk. When I return, I just pick up where I left off. These pencils have some fun colors, and I'm trying to use a lot of variety of colors to keep things interesting. This violet pink wouldn't be most people's first choice for a gray rock, but it works really well. It will be a good complement to the Payne's gray I used in the underdrawing. I think you can now see why a non-water soluble pencil for that underdrawing was a good move. The warmer color of the pink helps bring the rock forward in the painting. This is in contrast with the cooler green colors that now appear to be in the distance. 
That's a trick of using colors to help with atmospheric perspective. Adding color on top of color helps it get darker and more saturated. You'll notice that since the canvas is still a little moist, the pigment lays down thicker than when it was dry. You'll see in a minute how I really use this to my advantage in my next tip. The more pencil pigment I lay down, the thicker the paint is starting to feel under the brush. I'm really able to move it around. I'll use a lot more layers, but you can already see how it's making that rock look more substantial and rock-like. Now for tip number four. I mentioned that the pigment lays down thicker and more saturated on the moist surface. I'm going to use that to my advantage by putting a lot of water down with the spray bottle. Doing so will let me paint with thicker pigment and it's almost like the pencil becomes a brush with paint on it. Not really, but sort of. It's a great way to put some impressionistic marks on the canvas to help paint the shadows in those trees and leaves. I think that is one of the advantages of painting on this canvas board. I'm not going to have any buckling while I use this approach. I mean, you can do it with paper, but you just need to make sure it's taped down really well. That scraggly tree on the right has a lot of negative space to it. So I'm not painting the branches as much as I'm trying to paint what's behind the branches. The wetness is allowing the pigment to spread in interesting ways. It feels a bit more loose and natural than I'd get if I tried to simply draw them out. Painting with watercolor pencils is really painting with water on top of colors and letting the water do the work. That's both interesting and fun and frustrating at the same time. I don't always know what I'll get when it comes to the way the water moves. I have my canvas fairly flat here, which keeps it from moving too much. But you can get some interesting effects if you put it on a steeper angle. But I'm not doing that on this one. I want to keep a little bit better control. But keeping things under control can be boring too. I think I've been a little too careful so far. I think I need to loosen things up a little. I mean, it's okay to learn and go at your own pace. And I've honestly been learning a lot as I go here. I haven't really done this technique like this before. I really like how it's working for this rock, and I'm getting more confident as I go. I really am just trying stuff, and if it works, I keep doing more of it. And if it doesn't, I try something else. I've said it in my other videos, and I'll say it again here. I don't consider myself some all-knowing artist that is trying to teach the right way to do art. I'm just having fun with this, and I thought it would also be fun to try and make videos along with it. If anything, I hope to just encourage you to give it a try too. Just try stuff. And if these tips give some ideas for what you want to try on your own, then I've accomplished my goal. Give me a thumbs up if this has been helpful for you. So I've got two more tips to share, but I've still got a lot of ways to go to get this finished. Art can be a slow process, and honestly, I lose track of time when I do it. I just get lost in creating. Anyway, I'm really enjoying drawing the textures on this rock. If you look closely, the rocks have a lot of colors. I'm using a bit of yellow ochre to represent the lichen on this rock. A lot of people think that watercolor pencils need to spread and act like traditional watercolors. I kind of want to bust that myth. Watercolor pencils aren't like watercolor. It is a water-soluble pigment, but I don't think it should behave like watercolor. I think they should act like really interesting pencils. That can do some interesting things. As you've seen, I haven't used a brush in quite a while here. The pigment on the wet surface is laying down really thick and spreading in interesting ways. I'm even sort of surprised that I can lighten the color up when I use this light blue pencil. And since these are pencils, it's just natural to use them to draw. Here I decided to do more drawing for this tree after all. My second to last tip is another way to lighten things up. I really don't like the dark blue I'm putting down here and a drier brush will start to lift it up. but. Using paper towels is a quicker way to lift up the pigment back off the canvas. <laughs> I used a lot of paper towels on this piece. Even after I fiddled with the rock for quite some time, I would eventually go back in with the spray bottle to get things wet again and then use the paper towel to create some highlights. But I spent too long on this rock. Well, not too long. I like how it looks. And now it's time to paint the goat. It's interesting that the goat's fur coat is starting to change this time of year. It's shedding its winter coat. 
It was the end of May when I took this photo, and every winter this goat grows out its coat to stay warm and then shed it for the summer months. It's kind of a cool cycle. Some would say this is kind of an ugly phase for the goat when it's between the two cycles of the fur coat. But I think it's kind of interesting. I guess it's kind of like the phases of the art process that I'm in. It's still evolving and some think it's ugly and others like it. Your art might not feel perfect either, but it's interesting. Keep at it and it will get better. I sped the video up a bit because I did a lot of slow work on this. Easily 30 minutes of just plugging away and enjoying the process. Being patient is a good tip, but I have one more perhaps surprising tip to share. After using some dark ochres and grays to start showing the form of the body, I used a pretty dark black and brown for the eyes and horns. I kind of regretted how dark it went. The horns don't look quite right, and the eyes are pretty unnatural at this point. I'm trying to lift off the color with this brush, but it isn't really working that well, and a paper towel is a little bit too big. The good news is the last tip is an easier way to fix mistakes. After letting the painting sit for a while and get really completely dry, I broke out the battery-powered eraser. This tip works best when you have a high quality and dry surface. That's another reason why I like working on these watercolor canvas panels. I've used one of these battery-powered erasers on paper before. It works okay, but this panel is much more durable and can take a lot of erasing. I'm using a light touch for some of this because I just want to lighten the color and not get rid of it completely. It's also not a bad way to introduce some texture. Once I have the eyes, horns, and ears looking more natural, I'm going to go in and darken up the shadows, clean up some edges, and even darken the background to make the goat stand out even more. I'll spend some more time drawing those trees too. I guess another tip that I should have added here is that you don't have to wet the pencils always. You can leave them dry. Sometimes I wet them to get different effects and sometimes I leave them dry. It's totally okay to do either. I mentioned earlier that I do a lot of starting and stopping when I work on a painting, and this one was no different. I sometimes remember to turn on the camera, but sometimes I didn't. Either way, you can see that with persistence and some trial and error, I ended up with a pretty decent painting. My next one might even be better. Check it out here.